<coughs> Can you hear me? Yeah? Okay. Hello, good evening um, to all of you. My name is Ido Flato. I come to you from uh, far away Israel. And this session is about uh, Fiddler. Now, one question for you. Who here consider themselves web developers? Okay, so practically all of you. Um, who among of you are already using Fiddler in the work? Okay, so I hope that by next week all of you will be using Fiddler after what you see today. Okay, so uh, for those of you who are already familiar with Fiddler or uh, aren't familiar with Fiddler, let's start by meeting Fiddler. So this is Fiddler. Well, um, actually, this is the first version of Fiddler. We're not using uh, this application today. Uh, Fiddler was created by this guy. I mean the guy on the right, not the guy on the left. Okay. And today, Fiddler actually looks like so. This is Fiddler, second version of Fiddler. And the first thing that you can see straight away is that Fiddler was created by a developer. You can see this by the UI itself. Okay, uh, makes us miss the first version of Fiddler sometimes. So this is Fiddler, web, de web debugger uh, written by developers for developers. I don't know anyone else who can use this tool if he's not a developer. And what actually is Fiddler? Well, Fiddler basically is a proxy. Okay, you have your application, you have your server, your website, your web server, you have your APIs to communicate with the server. A proxy server, which is what Fiddler does, is just being in between your code and the server. It receives the information uh, of your requests and forwards it to the server uh, instead of your machine doing it on its own. So Fiddler is a proxy server, basically. But Fiddler is more than just a proxy server. Uh, Fiddler is a sniffer for HTTP communication and HTTPS. We'll see soon exactly how we can sniff HTTPS communication. But Fiddler is more than a sniffer. Fiddler is a debugger. With Fiddler, I can uh, more than listen to messages. I can change them. I can copy them. I can uh, replay messages on the fly. Okay? I can change messages while they while they'll, uh, travel, whether it's outside going to the server or coming back uh, as a response from the server. And Fiddler, well, it's basically a .NET application. It was written back. Uh, in .NET 2, and today it's running .NET 3.5. So because it's written in .NET, it is extensible. You can write your own code for Fiddler, uh, your own tampering code with requests. Uh, we'll see later during the end of the session exactly how to do that. Okay? So Fiddler is extensible. And one important thing, Fiddler is free of charge. Okay? Fiddler was written, as I said, by uh, this guy on the right, not on the left. Uh, who is a PM, product manager in Microsoft. Fiddler was first written to debug uh, problems with the Office clip art back in 2001-2002. So Fiddler, um, although it's uh, not exactly a Microsoft product, it is supported by a Microsoft uh, personnel, so Fiddler is free of charge. And of course, Fiddler, as I see it at least, is a must tool for every web developer. Okay, if you consider yourself web developers, that's why I asked you uh, when we began. If you are a web developer, you should be familiar with Fiddler. You should have at least Fiddler installed in your machine, even if you're not going to use it, because you will use it at some point. Okay? Whether it is next week, next month, or today if you're going back to the office later on. I don't know. Anyone going back to the office to debug stuff? No? I have to fly back, so for me it won't be today. But next week, I can assure you I will use Fiddler. So how exactly does Fiddler work? Well, Fiddler being an application, it's not hardware, Fiddler just plugs in to the, uh, to the system's API that control HTTP communication. We have two basic components in uh, Windows. One is called WinHTTP, one is called WinINET. Uh, for example, browsers such as IE, such as Chrome, use WinINET. Uh, other applications, for example, .NET uses WinHTTP. Okay. Um, Firefox, for example, uses simple web sockets. So Fiddler uh, has a special hook that hooks up to Firefox in order to catch the communication. 
But basically, Fiddler catches every HTTP communication that goes out from your machine. So it can catch almost everything. Uh, so what can it do, basically? So yeah, it can listen to messages. That's the basic uh, um, feature of a proxy. But it can also show you the message content. So for example, if it's an XML content, I can view it as an XML. If it's an image, I can view it as an image. Unlike, for example, tools like um, sniffers, uh, um, like TCP sniffers. Anyone using Wireshark today? You're familiar with Wireshark network monitoring tools, uh, such as uh, Netman from Microsoft? These tools show you the packets. They don't show you the, uh, uh, the content of the message. Fiddler, being a special proxy written in .NET, can figure out that this response is an image and show you the image. This response is an XML and show you the content of an XML hierarchically using a tree. Okay. So Fiddler can give you a lot of benefits. Fiddler can allow you to change the request. If you need to change something in the content uh, before sending it to the server, Fiddler allows you to do that, whether it's manual or automatically. Okay. And well, basically, it says here that Fiddler doesn't make coffee. Uh, it can make coffee. There are new coffee makers that use HTTP, so you can use Fiddler to send messages to those coffee makers and make yourself a cup of coffee. So Fiddler can do everything. Well, maybe it can't order you pizza to the office in the evening when you are uh, debugging stuff, but at least it can make you coffee. <coughs> so where can we use Fiddler? Well, first of all, let's see, I asked web developers. Uh, let's be more specific. How many of you are .NET developers? .NET. OK, whoa, a lot of these. I guess uh, ASP.NET or uh, web services of some sort, uh, ASP.NET web services, uh, web APIs, WCF, right? Yeah? OK, anyone here uh, develops for uh, smartphones, Android, uh, Apple devices, Windows phones? Yeah, some of you? OK. So we can use Fiddler for ASP.NET applications. We can use Fiddler for web services, WCF, ASMX, doesn't matter. We can use it for Silverlight application. Any Silverlight developers here? Silverlight? Yeah, one. OK. <coughs> I hope that you will remain a Silverlight development by the end of the year. Um, if you're using a client-side JavaScript calls, Ajax calls, you can listen to those requests using Fiddler. Uh, Fiddler doesn't even require you to use .NET applications. Ask .NET because I am a .NET consultant. So if you're a PHP developer, or uh, Java developers, J2E, or if you're using Flash, okay, you can use Fiddler. Basically, everything that has HTTP in it can be uh, um, tapped in by Fiddler. Okay. By the way, even if you're not using a Windows operating system, if you have a Mac and, to, and you want to use Fiddler, if you have a smartphone, okay, like uh, this one, and you want to use Fiddler, well, you can't install Fiddler on it, but Fiddler is a proxy. So if you just configure a device properly, you can tell your smartphone to use a proxy that is running under a Windows device. Okay? So for example, I've configured my phone to use Fiddler, and we'll see in a short while how I can browse via my phone or activate any application and see everything that goes on with Fiddler. <coughs> So let's do a small tour around Fiddler and understand how it works without looking at the source code, of course. <coughs> so first of all, let's open Fiddler. Um, you can see immediately WinForm application written in .NET. Basically, no UI expertise were needed to build this application. Just place as many tabs as you can, uh, put as many uh, lists as you can, and we can now go to a website. Um, once I turned on Fiddler, Fiddler hooked itself up into the WinINET, into the WinHTTP. So for example, if I will go to uh, the NDC website, <coughs> okay, I can see exactly the requests which were sent. By the way, uh, those uh, three requests at the start, those 502, are the uh, fault of Chrome trying to figure out how your network works. I do not have a virus on my machine or something like that, so don't be alarmed. Uh, and I can see the requests. This is the list of requests. I can see the content of a request and the response. So for example, I go, go on ahead, look at the request being sent to the server, 
look at the response being sent back from the server. This is, of course, something which is compressed, so I can decompress it and look at the content. OK, this is an HTML file. Or actually, this is an HTML. Yeah, this is an HTML file. And I have here many, many, many tabs. But we have about an hour to discuss all of these tabs, so I won't go over them right now. And basically, just so you understand how Fiddler uh, actually captured those uh, requests, if I go to the settings under the hood and check the proxy settings, I can see that actually Fiddler placed itself as a proxy server on my machine at port 8888. This is where uh, Fiddler is listening to requests. And right now, it is listening to requests whether I'm sending them via a web browser, such as Chrome, i.e. Firefox, whether I'm using a .NET application that is going to send a request to the network. Okay? Fiddler will capture every uh, piece of HTTP communication that is going out from your machine. And as I said, I can also hook up my uh, smartphone. So le just let me check which network I'm currently using. OK, I'm using the current. Run. Let me clear everything here. I will close the browser so you'll see I'm not following you. And I have here a smartphone. And I'll open up Google to search for the NDC Oslo website. OK. And I found the result. I will try to go to the NDC Oslo website. And <coughs> I will go to the speakers page. OK, you can see it. It's small if you want to gather around and see. So you should be uh, seeing a lot of pictures being downloaded, right? OK, so I'm actually using my phone. And it doesn't matter if it's my phone or if it's a Mac that I'm using to develop iOS applications for uh, iPad or iPhone, or if I'm, uh, I'm creating something from a, for an Android machine. Fiddler can be a proxy server and be accessed from every machine in the network. So you can't access my machine right now because I'm using a separate uh, network using my uh, MiFi. I tried to do that using the Wi-Fi network of the conference, but it uh, doesn't permit communication between machines. So you can try to hack into my machine right now. OK. <coughs> so let's just move back to the normal fast network, and we can continue. So this was a small piece of Fiddler. We'll see more of Fiddler in the next couple of minutes. and. Let's start to talk a bit about what Fiddler can do. So first of all, Fiddler is an HTTP sniffer, meaning it is going to check every communication that is going out of your own machine. So we can see the communication. We can see statistical information about the requests, the size of the request, the time it took to send the request and get the response back from the website. We can use inspectors, those uh, things are used to see the content of the message. Okay, And we can use a special timeline view that will show us the list of requests, not as a list, but as a chronological graph that shows us exactly when each request started, when it completed, and if requests were executed in parallel. Okay, So let's go ahead and see some of these things. So first of all, as I told you, this is the list of sessions. This is the web session list. Okay, A request in Fielder is called a session. It's not an ASP.NET session. It's a session, a request. Uh, this list contains stuff like the result of the, uh, of the response. This was a 200. 200 means what? HTTP, OK, right? Um, let's uh, check how familiar you are with HTTP verbs and uh, um, codes. Uh, what is, uh, let's try something like this one. <coughs> Everything is a 200 for some reason. Let's try again. <coughs> OK, why is it 304? 304? Unmodified, OK, if you're using caching. And I hope that you are using caching in your applications. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes. OK, so this is the session list. We can see which protocol was used. By the way, Fiddler also supports FTP, if you want to sniff FTP communication. Uh, I can see the website, the full URL. I can see information about the result. 
uh, the size of the body that was returned, whether I was using caching uh, or not, whether the server returned the page I was using caching, uh, the type, the MIME type of the response, whether it was JavaScript, CSS, HTML, an XML, a flash file, a SWIFT file, and that sort of stuff. And um, something else that can be important, the process that actually sent that request. Okay, so I can differentiate between uh, stuff that was sent from my .NET application and stuff which was sent from my browser, where I check the latest talk quotes, okay, uh, or check uh, if I have anything new in Facebook. So I can differentiate the two. So this is the session list, and here we have <coughs> the statistics. Now, statistics for one session, each session that I pick, shows us First of all, simple information about the time the request was sent, the time the request was received by the server, the time that the server completed processing that request and started sending the response. This is um, helpful information, for example, to check how much time it actually takes the server to process your request. Okay? Uh, so you can subtract it from the time, the overall time that you see the request coming back. Okay? And if I, if I select more than one session, I can actually get more statistical information. For example, um, how many types of HTTP codes did I have? For example, I had 118 304 responses. 304 is uh, unmodified. Okay, so this means I had about a quarter of the responses uh, being stored in my cache, which is good. I uh, wish it was a third or even uh, half, but a quarter is also good. And I can see a statistical um, um, size of the responses. I had here 1.9 megabytes of JPEGs, 700K of HTML, and one icon. Who uses icons today? I don't know. Uh, well, for management, maybe you'll be um, more comfortable showing graphs. You know, management doesn't like to see numbers. They are more uh, convinced by graphs. So we can see we have a lot of JPEG images, which um, we probably should try to compress them somehow. So this is the statistical uh, information. We have the inspectors. Inspectors actually allow us to see the content of the response and the request and apply transformers to those um, messages. For example, for an HTML message, I might want to see how that HTML will be rendered into a page file. I can do that. If I have an XML, maybe I want to parse it and show it as a tree. I can do that. Okay. If I have an image, I can see the image itself. Okay. And another thing that we have is the timeline, as I said. And the timeline <coughs> allows me to see exactly when each request was sent. If I select something which is uh, bigger, let's select from here to here. Okay. I can see exactly when the request was sent, when uh, the response uh, was returned from the server. I can see if requests were executed in parallel. This will help me verify, for example, that if I'm calling a web service from a client, that I can actually send several, client, uh, several calls in parallel from my client. Okay? For example, this is a good way to test the problem with uh, .NET client applications that limit the maximum connections per server to, anyone knows how much? .NET applications. Be, being uh, um, calling to a server, they have a limitations of two connections. Okay, so don't try to send more than two requests uh, simultaneously to one server from a .NET application. If you want to increase that limit, okay, it's quite easy. So this is the timeline. <coughs> Helps us to figure out what the hell is going on. Why are requests uh, being uh, sent slowly, or are they sent synchronously? This is a really helpful tool to understand if our application actually works as we designed it to work. Okay. <coughs> so these are the inspectors, the timeline. And regarding inspectors, let's do a uh, pop quiz. Um, the content that is shown here, what is it? <coughs> do you recognize that type of content? Well, it actually it says that in the content type. Uh, this content type is JSON. Okay, it doesn't actually say that. It says X JavaScript. But this is a JSON content. Okay, the brackets and the uh, uh, properties um, and the values. And when I look at that, I actually have to parse everything uh, myself. But instead, newer versions of Fiddler 
have inspectors specifically for JSON content. So instead of saying something like this, I can select JSON from here and see something like this. <coughs> okay. Next type of content. Let's see how you go. How you uh, manage. Why is this content? Look at the first three letters that are in the content. PNG. PNG is an image file. Okay. So of course I don't want to uh, look at it using an hexadecimal viewer trying to figure out from the bits which pixels I'm, uh, I'm using. Instead of that, I will just pick the image view, okay, which is right here, and I will get an image. If I'm using the following content, this should be easy. XML, right? So instead of seeing XML, I can just click the XML, which is uh, on the bottom to the right, and I can see it as an XML content, okay? <coughs> and last but not least, why is that? JavaScript. So you downloaded the script, which is basically what we do when we use websites, and we want to read that script as long as it's not minified. And instead of uh, viewing it like so, we can just click the script button, the syntax view, and see it as a real script. Okay, with colors and indentation and everything else. Okay, so inspectors are quite useful in order to understand what actually is being transferred on the wire. You can actually build your own inspectors if you have the need uh, for that. Okay, uh, when we get to the end of the session, I'll show you a small inspector that I wrote a couple of weeks ago. <coughs> so. One of the problems that we have with uh, Fiddler is that we installed Fiddler on our machines because we are all developers, right? We need Fiddler. I told you to install Fiddler by the end of the week, please. Okay. And um, what happens with our customers? Sometimes you get a call from your customer. The customer will tell you that, well, I have a problem. I see some sort of uh, uh, an image not being shown in the website. I don't know what's going on. And usually it ends up by either we uh, remote desktop his machine, try to connect to it somehow, ask, ask them to send us screen captures. And instead of that, if we want to actually see the requests they are sending to the server, we can use Fiddler not as a proxy, but as a reverse proxy. Place Fiddler on the server and make every request to the server flow through Fiddler. So it does require some settings. Okay, you need to install Fiddler on the server, edit some settings, change the port that your web server is actually listening on, usually from 80 to a different port. But then you can use Fiddler as a reverse proxy, and instead of asking your clients to install Fiddler on their machines, you can actually see all the requests that they are sending to your machine. Okay, so this is a quite useful feature in Fiddler. <coughs> now, how many of you said you are using Fiddler? How many? Okay. Uh, keep your hands up. How many of you have tried to sniff localhost addresses? Many of us, right? All of you. Because usually when we develop, the web server is on our machine, whether it's an IIS web server uh, installed locally on our machine, whether it's the development web server of Visual Studio, the Cassini web server. And when we try to sniff localhost addresses using Fiddler, Fiddler doesn't show those requests. And this is because um, the inner mechanism of Windows um, simply sees that it is a localhost address and just bypass the, fiddler, uh, the, uh, the proxy, okay? bypasses Fiddler. And <coughs> to solve that, well, we have a couple of options. First of all, if you're browsing in your web browser uh, to localhost, just change the localhost to the name of your machine. That will simply tell your uh, ap application to access the proxy. Instead of that, well, you can try to change the name of the machine to a special DNS name called IPv4.fiddler, or if you wanted to use the version 6 of uh, IP, use IPv6.fiddler. What it actually does, it actually does nothing. It thinks that you are trying to communicate with a web server called IPv4.fiddler. It sends that request. That request is caught by Fiddler. Fiddler sees this special name uh, of a server, and replaces that with the localhost. Okay, so it's a mimic, it's a workaround to solve that issue. But it works, it works great, by the way, if you want to work with the ASP.NET development server. Because ASP.NET development server, if you try to change the name 
in the address from localhost to the name of your machine, it won't accept the request. Okay? You will get a failure. Using IPv4 Fiddler will uh, allow you to use the Cassini uh, internal web server or Visual Studio. Now, in browsers, um, it doesn't work in .NET applications, so don't try that. Uh, you can try to replace localhost with localhost dot. Okay, it works quite well in browsers. Uh, I tried that using WCF in .NET clients, but it doesn't work. Okay, but in browsers, you can just write localhost dot slash and continue, and it will work. It will be caught by Fiddler. And of course, there are many other options. And if you are using uh, IE9 and on, then IE will actually transfer localhost requests to Fiddler. Okay? Uh, previously, IE8, IE7 uh, did not do that. In IE9, they changed a bit the way the proxy uh, configuration works. And they do allow sending localhost requests to, um, to Fiddler. Okay? So we shouldn't have any problem with that. Now, at the bottom of the slides, if you'll notice, I have a link. Uh, this presentation is already on the network, so you can just um, um, l uh, go into my SkyDrive uh, and download it. And every link here uh, leads up to the Fiddler website, where you have more information on how to do everything that I tell you. Okay? So at the end of the session, go to my SkyDrive. There will be a link at the end. Download the session, go over the uh, slides, and Check out these links because they will give you more information. Okay? If we had a full day, I would teach you everything, but we have an hour. <coughs> so let's talk a bit about uh, Fiddler and HTTPS. As I told you, Fiddler is not a sniffer only for HTTP, it's also for HTTPS. Now, this is kind of weird because HTTPS is supposed to be secured, right? So if it's secured, how come I can install a uh, proxy on my machine and see everything that I'm sending? Uh, through HTTPS, whether I log into my bank account, whether I log into my Gmail account using HTTPS. Okay, so basically, HTTPS is secured between machines, and <coughs> Fiddler actually works as some sort of as a, uh, a man in the middle. Every uh, communication you do with HTTPS actually goes from your machine to Fiddler, from Fiddler to the remote server. So actually, we have two channels, two secure channels, one from your machine to Fiddler, one from Fiddler to the web server. Okay? Problem is, if we have two channels, Fiddler can't actually provide you with the, um, the certificate of the web server because the certificate of the web server states this was given to the web server. If Fiddler just hands over this uh, certificate, the certificate will fail because you're trying to connect to a proxy, not to a web server. The addresses are different. So what Fiddler actually does, Fiddler actually generates a new certificate for each HTTPS website you're visiting. Okay? And this is a new certificate. It's being sent to your browser. Your browser will probably show you a warning uh, regarding that message. So you can just tell it, okay, I understand. I'm using Fiddler, so I guess it's okay. And once you do that, you have two secure channels, one between your web server and Fiddler, one between Fiddler and the actual website, and you have a secure website, but Fiddler is the man in the middle. It shows you everything that's going on. Okay? So let's see how it works. <coughs> so <laughs> first of all, let's clean the list. Um, first of all, I activate the HTTPS support and tell Fiddler to capture HTTPS and to decrypt it. So right now, Fiddler asks me if I want to install the certificate authority um, certificate of Fiddler. Uh, a CA certificate is actually the way that we can um, tell the browser that everything that Fiddler does is OK. It generates certificates. OK, I'll allow it. I don't want to see any error warnings. I won't do that right now because I want to show you how it looks uh, if I don't do that. OK, so let's do this. I'll have to restart Fiddler. <coughs> Let's restart Chrome. And I'll try to go to a website using HTTPS. So let's just go to google.com using HTTPS. Are you familiar with the uh, option of using HTTPS for google.com if you don't want your boss to know what you are searching online? OK, so this is a good way. Uh, but as you can see, I'm getting an L uh, regarding the certificate because it was given to me by Fiddler, and I don't know what Fiddler is. Now, uh, Chrome is kind of cruel, and it doesn't allow me to continue onto the website. So I'll just copy this address and go to um, a browser that does allow me to do that. 
Internet Explorer. And I'll tell it, yeah, I know, I know, just go on. And I actually get uh, to the website, but if I look at Fiddler right now, I can see those requests, and I can also see the responses. <coughs> okay. This is the response that I got from the HTTPS request. I'm actually seeing the content. Okay. And if I don't want to get uh, these error messages every time, I can just go to Fiddler and tell it again that I want to uh, decrypt the information. I want to install the root certificate. It didn't work quite well. Let me do it again. Tools. <coughs> Come on. I need to close Fiddler for a minute. Just close, start. <coughs> yes, oh, this is the message I was expecting. And right now we can open up IE or Chrome, doesn't matter, HTTPS. And it works without giving me any error warning. Okay, so what I actually did, I installed uh, the root certificate of Fiddler on my machine, telling um, my machine that I accept every certificate that was generated by Fiddler. That simple. Okay. <coughs> So we can actually use HTTPS with Fiddler. So let's go on and talk a bit about all the traffic that we saw. We have an entire list of web sessions that Fiddler caught. What can we do with them? So first of all, we can go ahead and mark sessions manually, the ones that we want to see, um, uh, color them, and watch uh, and expect, uh, um, sorry, uh, examine them later. But we can actually search that list. We have a nice find window that we'll see in a couple of seconds. Uh, we can filter all that content. Okay, we have a filter tab that allows us to filter according to um, the application that started the request. I can filter according to the content itself, according to HTTP headers in the request, in the response. Uh, I can do many types of filtering using Fiddler. I can also create my own if I want to. And I also have a command line uh, that I can uh, use. I don't like it that much because it makes me type, and I like to use my mouse. I don't like to type when I'm using Fiddler, um, <coughs> simply because I like my mouse that much. And let's go ahead and see some of this stuff, how we can uh, filter communication. <coughs> so first of all, let's have some content here. OK, let's load up the speakers list. And why isn't it working? Fiddler. OK, seems to be working. <coughs> so we have the option to select uh, sessions. Ooh, yeah, lots of images. And just mark them with a color. OK, so we can uh, ex uh, examine them later on. But that's not enough. We have the find option that allows us to um, select sessions according to different content, whether it's content in the request, in the response, in the URL itself. So for example, I can uh, check for all the content that has image in the URL. And I can mark them, OK, which is kind of nice. Now I can go over them. I can check statistics for them. I can see the total size of all those messages. So this was around <coughs> 16 Ks. And <coughs> What else can I do? For example, I can try to use that command line. Uh, please select, can you see that? Let me try to zoom in a bit. Please select all the uh, sessions that have image in the content type. Okay, basically select all images, whether they are uh, uh, JPEG, PNG files, everything that is an image. Okay, and everything is selected. I can then use tools from Fiddler, for example, the gallery. Uh, you don't have this tool uh, in Fiddler, um, but you can download it from the Fiddler website. Okay, I have a link at the end of the session. And I can see the photos of all the speakers in the conference. Let me see who do we have here. Lots and lots of speakers. And there's some handsome dude over here. Okay, and um, well, this is nice. Uh, of course, I can take an image, look at the properties, 
check the content, look at the headers, check if it's uh, set to be cached. Yeah, it's using a caching header, so it should be okay. <coughs> and I have also the option to filter the content. Oops, let's go back. Filter the content. And have here many options of filtering, whether I want to filter according to content uh, coming from intranet websites or internet websites, intranet websites, internal websites of my organization, usually identified by a single name server, unlike www.something.com, which is an internet website. Something that is called my server is usually an intranet website because it's a local, ma a lo local machine uh, on my network. I can filter according to a client process, okay? So I can select exactly which process I want to check. <coughs> I don't need to see all the sessions from all the applications that are using HTTP on my machine. By the way, I can also do that using this filter. So for example, if I drag this into my Chrome browser, as you can see, it's coloring. Now I'm actually only listening to Chrome process ID 36004, okay? Let me just disable that. <coughs> I can also specify that I want to listen only to browsers or uh, more common to non-browsers because I'm debugging .NET applications and I don't want all my Facebook requests showing up in Fiddler. Okay. So I have all of these options to filter messages, uh, <coughs> but at the end, I need to do something with those messages. For example, I'm a tester. I need to test my code. I'm testing the code, I'm seeing some sort of a bug. I'm calling my developer, I'm telling, them, um, I'm telling uh, him uh, I have a bug. And he tries to reproduce it on his machine and he can't reproduce it. And he tells me, the last excuse down there, does it reproduce? No, I'm closing the bug. Okay. And <coughs> well, we actually have a lot of excuses, as you can see. Um, my best uh, excuse is uh, the first one, it works on my machine. Okay. You can pick your own best excuse from there. Um, but basically, now that we have Fiddler, any tester, any QA person who does testing for applications can just have Fiddler running on their machine. And all of these sessions that Fiddler gets, the request and the response, they can just take that list, save that to a file, and send that file to the developer. Then I can just pick that file, uh, put it in my Fiddler uh, application, and see the entire content of requests and responses, and all the statistical information, how much time every request took, uh, each request took, sorry, and I can see everything that the QA actually did on their machine. Hopefully, this will be enough to figure out the bug, okay? Looking at the content of the responses, checking out uh, HTTP 500 messages, which are else. So we have a proprietary uh, file type for Fiddler called SAZ. Uh, this is actually a zipped file containing all the information, but Fiddler actually allows you to save uh, all of the content into an HTTP <coughs> archive file, which is a standard file, a standard uh, um, archive file being uh, standardized right now. Um, Google uh, Chrome supports it, IE supports it, even uh, Firefox, I think, supports it. And one interesting thing, since Fiddler is a Microsoft application, not sold by Microsoft, but it was written by someone from Microsoft. Fiddler can actually generate uh, from the sessions a web test class that you can just plug in into Visual Studio and use it to stress test your application. So I can just open Chrome, browse into my application, do a lot of stuff, take all of these sessions, save them as a web test project, and just load them in Visual Studio and start try and stressing test my system, okay? Doing a stress test. So I hope I talked enough for you to read all of these excuses because I want to go to the next slide. Everyone done? What was your uh, best uh, excuse? Uh, I think I use that a lot. I can't test everything. I only have eight hours a day to work. Or, um, <coughs> um, oh, uh, the one, yeah, this one is also one of my favorite, uh, number 22. Hmm. Usually it's added by interesting, okay? <coughs> so we can see the content of the requests and the responses. What's the point? I mean, okay, I saw some bugs, I fixed them. Fiddler is not only to show you the bugs. Fiddler is um, a tool that allows you to draw conclusions 
you saw a lot of pictures being downloaded into the client side, 200 responses. Maybe you should try considering uses, uh, using CSS sprites, OK? Put all of the images into one file. You saw a lot of JavaScript requests uh, because you have a large website, a large HTML page. Maybe you should consider combining all of those JavaScript files into one file. Okay. You saw a lot of round trips, uh, 304 redirections. Maybe you should check your URLs to verify that they are pointing to the new website. Okay. Use Fiddler to check if every um, static uh, component in your web server is being cached or if it's being compressed. Okay, because those are the things that will allow us to make our applications run faster. Okay, less responses, less round trips, uh, more compression, more caching. So, Fiddler is uh, a tool that allows you to find these things out. But do remember, Fiddler allows you to find these things. Fiddler is not intended to measure performance. Okay, because Fiddler by itself affects performance. Okay, it's a proxy. It has its own number, its own set of threads that it can use to send requests. And if you have .NET applications running and you have your Windows applications running, okay, uh, Windows services and such, and you have <coughs> uh, your web browser, well, Fiddler won't be able to manage everything uh, in parallel. Okay, so use Fiddler to figure out what goes on. Don't use Fiddler to measure performance. For that, we have other tools. Now, one warning to you all. Uh, if you see this message, or if you see this message uh, in Firefox, or if you see the following message in IE, don't be alarmed, OK? Um, something that happens to all of us at some point in our life, things crash, OK? So if either crashes or you get the blue screen of death on your machine, what happens is actually Fiddler, uh, Fiddler's proxy settings are still in effect. Okay, the browser still thinks it needs to go through Fiddler, but Fiddler is not running, so you get awkward messages about not being able to connect to the web. Okay, um, so before you reboot your machine, before you try to reboot your Wi-Fi uh, router, before you try to format your machine. By the way, I heard about uh, a guy that formatted his machine because he didn't understand why it didn't work. Okay, yeah. So just try to open Fiddler again. You can close it. Once you close Fiddler successfully, it cleans up all the proxy settings. Okay? So if you have a, a day that you come into the office, you boot up your machine from hibernation or something like that, you try to open a web browser and you can't connect to the internet, try to remember if you used Fiddler the day before. It actually saved me a lot of, uh, a, a lot of times. <coughs> okay? So let's talk a bit about uh, traffic manipulation. We saw that we can look at traffic, but I told you that Fiddler also allows us to manipulate the traffic. We can create rules in Fiddler. If some sort of a message comes with a certain header, then do something. Uh, mark it with a color, change the header, notify me using a beep or something like that. Um, I can use filters to manipulate the messages. When a message comes in, Remove any um, um, content type from the message. I want to test if my application manages to understand the content type. Okay? Or remove every cache header when a message is being sent because I don't want the server to return a 304. I want to get the real response. Okay? Because I have a new version of a JavaScript file, I need to get the new version. <coughs> I can create scripts of my own. I can use breakpoints to allow me, just like in code, to stop uh, sending uh, stuff before the, the request is being sent to the server, allowing me to tap into that request and change it in runtime. Okay? Um, let's see these tools. So, first of all, <coughs> we have certain set of uh, fixed rules. For example, I can apply gzip encoding to all of the requests in order to see which request, uh, which response is returned compressed. Okay? I can also do the opposite remove all the encodings to see the total size of my website. I can uh, mimic different user agents, change the agent HTTP header in the request in order to check if the content in the response is changed. For example, I can use this to test how my content will be when I use an agent uh, um, a smartphone, okay? uh, such as a Windows phone IE or um, an iOS uh, web browser, stuff like that. <coughs> 
you can add things to this list. Okay? I can also uh, check how my application will act if it works under a, a, a bad network, a network that has a latency. Okay? So for example, I can check simulate modem speed and have an additional latency for each and every request and response just to see if my application doesn't have timeouts. Okay? All of these are actually being done using a script that I can tap into, change it, and apply it immediately. Okay? This is a script that actually, for example, I have a script here that says, <coughs> uh, where is it? Here it is. Uh, if I'm going to browse, if there is a request uh, being sent to uh, DoubleClick.net. Uh, DoubleClick.net is the ads server for Google, okay, uh, from where I get all my ads. I want that, um, that line in the web sessions uh, be marked with red, so I know I'll have, I have problems with ads in a web application. It uses ads. I don't like ads. I will remove them. Okay. So I can change on before request, on after response. By the way, if you're uh, asking yourself, what is this language? because it looks like c -sharp, but it's not. Um, does anyone remember jscript.net? Remember that language? This is jscript.net. So you'll have to learn jscript.net. It's not that hard. Usually, I just do copy-paste, and it works somehow. OK. <coughs> so I can also use uh, filters to affect my messages. For example, I can. <coughs> Uh, use a filter to delete response headers if I want to remove caching headers uh, just to verify that my browser will, uh, won't keep anything locally. Okay. I can block certain files such as uh, SWE files if I don't want to get any flash uh, responses. I can do a lot of filtering to manipulate the content of the requests and the responses. Okay. <coughs> now, as I said, one of the options that we have is breakpoints. I can actually turn on a breakpoint, whether it's on outgoing requests or incoming responses, and stop before the request is being sent or before the response is being delivered to the web browser or that application. What it allows me is actually I can change the content of the message being sent. I can change the response being sent back and uh, um, test my application with it. Okay. So for example, hi, I, I had a case where I had a web service um, that I needed to um, call to, and that web service returned a bad response, and I couldn't fix that web service. It wasn't mine. So I just used a breakpoint, changed the content of the response just to figure out what's going on, and found out that the content type the response had was uh, um, text slash XML instead of application slash XML. I, don't know, I sent an email to that company and told them, Please figure out why you're sending the wrong content type in the XML response. Okay? So I use the breakpoint to test my client uh, um, by changing the, the response, the content of the response, and allowing me to use the response I got from the server, but change it just to verify what's wrong with it. Okay? So this is kind of useful. Mm. If you want to turn on breakpoints, it's quite easy. I can just go to the rules, automatic endpoints, Either before request, after responses, and whilst I do that, I won't do it right now because I have a lot of requests and it will get uh, messy. Um, it will just stop everything and ask me what to do with this request. Should I let you change it? Do you want to re uh, um, replace it with something else? <coughs> so this is the way that we can control using breakpoints. And one of the things that we can also do, for example, is replay requests. You have an application. You go through the pages of, those of that application, and you hit Enter, Submit. Something is wrong with the server code. It doesn't calculate uh, the result well. You get an error response. You change the code in the server. What do you do now? You do everything again in the client application. You go through the screens and hit Submit. So why do you need to hit Submit if the same request is being sent to the server? The only change is that the server is doing something else. So I can just go into Fiddler, pick the re request that was sent before, and hit replay. And that request will be sent to the server again. Okay? Simply as that. I can just go into Fiddler, pick the request. Okay, let's um, I will clear everything. 
By the way, if I have one request and I want to uh, clear everything other than uh, that request, I can simply press Shift Delete, and only that request will stay. Okay? I can actually select several requests, hit Shift Delete, and all, uh, only those requests will remain. And I can hit Replay. It will just replay again. I can hit even uh, Shift Replay and say I want to test it 30 times because I want to stress test my server. Okay? Uh, I actually tried to do that uh, with 700 times, and uh, my machine got kicked out from the network. So don't try this uh, on your network. Uh, um, last time I did it, I banned my uh, uh, company's uh, Wi-Fi network from uh, a, foreign web, uh, a foreign website. I won't try that on the NDC Oslo uh, network because that will mean you can't access the internet in the next couple of days. So I won't try that. Okay, so I can hit replay. I can even uh, replay unconditionally. Unconditionally means I am removing every caching header from the content, so it won't be cached. Okay, this is like hitting Control F5 in your browser. Okay, I can also build requests from scratch. If you don't want to replay a request, you want to create a request on your own, or if you want to take some request that was sent uh, uh, way back and change something in it, I can just take a request drag it into the composer window, change it, and hit execute. Okay? It looks something like this. I can take that request, um, what is it, composer, drag it here, see the content. If, I, if it was a post message, for example, I could change the body. Okay? The get message, I can change uh, the, URL, uh, the URL, the headers, add my own headers, hit execute, and it will just be sent again. By the way, uh, don't worry about adding content and then having to calculate the content length. Content length is calculated automatically by Fiddler. Okay, you don't have to open Notepad and check how many characters you actually entered. <coughs> um, another thing that you can do with, with uh, Fiddler is using an autoresponder. For example, I have a case in, um, where I need to go to companies and talk to them and um, during the conversation, I'm showing them our website, our, our company's website, but sometimes I don't have an internet connection because meetings are in a bunker or something like that, or I forgot to bring my uh, uh, cellular uh, modem, and I don't have an internet connection in order to show them that website. So what I actually did is I went over to my website. My website currently looks like so. This is my website. I'm currently connected to the internet, so it works. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I can see my website, but if I'm disconnected from the web, I can go to the autoresponder, import an SAZ file that I pre-saved containing all of my web application. I just browsed into the website, uh, took all the sessions that Fiddler collected and saved them um, uh, in a file. And right now, I don't have an internet connection. Oops, I do have one. Now I don't have one. I'll turn off this machine. OK, I don't have an internet connection. I can go to, f to IE and still <coughs> manage to load my uh, website, browse in it, check my information. OK, and I don't have an internet connection right now. Simply because I have an autoresponder. An autoresponder means basically when you see a URI that matches the following, please respond with the following content. Okay, that it can be a file that I pre-saved. It can be a redirection to some other website. It can even be a breakpoint. So it's like conditional breakpoints in .NET. Okay, when you see a URI, do a breakpoint. Great. Okay, I can even mimic the latency of the original request, so people won't actually know that I am not connected to the internet. Okay, hey, see it, uh, the connection is slow. Okay, we'll have to wait a couple of seconds. <coughs> okay, so this is the autoresponder. Now, as I told you before, you can actually extend Fiddler. Okay, you can add your own stuff to Fiddler. For example, I can take that script that I showed you before, that jscript.net, and add my own content to it, as long as I know jscript.net. Okay, I can create new inspectors. I can create, for example, um, 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 auto tampering content that actually sits in the pipeline itself of Fiddler, checks every request and response being sent and returned, and change the content of those messages. Okay, I can create C-sharp code, compile it into an assembly, and place that 
in the Fiddler pipeline. Okay? I can create new commands for that quick exec window. Quick exec is the uh, little window here that I used before. Okay? I can create new commands for that window. I can add menus of my own. I can add new tabs to Fiddler. Okay? I can do everything because it's a WinForm application. I can just write an assembly for it, and Fiddler will load it as part of its initial loading. Okay? If you want to know exactly how to do that, there's a link at the bottom. Okay? Just go to um, the website. You can't see it clearly right now, but in the uh, presentation you'll download from the web, you can see it clearly. Go to the website, learn everything that is there to learn about extending Fiddler. I just want to show you one thing about how to create an inspector. Okay? So just so you understand uh, what I mean by creating an inspector, I have here a special inspector called <coughs> uh, image view. Okay? Uh, not image view, sorry. Uh, what is it? JPEG EXIF. Uh, JPEG EXIF actually allows me to see the EXIF metadata in the JPEG file. See the content of the JPEG metadata. For example, I like to uh, view, let's just clear the list. I like to um, um, take a look at photographs people are, um, um, people are taking and uh, see which cameras they used for those photos. Okay? I have a Canon. I like Canon. I don't like Nikon. So if I see an image taken by a Nikon camera, I immediately say, nah, that's not that good. Okay? If I see a Canon camera, I say, well, it's okay. So, what? Ah, I don't have my network. Let's connect back. Yeah, I didn't have autoresponder for that. <coughs> so I can go to that photo sharing website, browse the photo, and once I see that photo, oh, what a cute puppy. Okay, I can take a look at that photo and go back to Fiddler, uh, select the images, go on to the gallery. Here is that cute puppy. And I can go to my JPEG EXIF and see exactly that this, this was, uh, um, was captured by a Canon 7D, which is a great camera, by the way. Costs a lot of money, but a great camera. And I can see all the information that uh, the camera actually saved, okay, the exposure level and that sort of stuff. And to write this uh, piece of code, I actually just needed to write a small WinForm. I had to actually learn WinForm for that. Okay? I didn't know WinForm bef uh, before that. It took me about four hours of writing, three hours to learn how to write in WinForms, and one hour to actually develop that uh, inspector. And all that inspector has to do is to inherit from uh, a couple of classes and interfaces, implement the, uh, the body property. I received the property, uh, the body content, it was a binary array, and just plug it in into my uh, image view. Okay? Simple as that. I won't show you the, uh, all of the code because um, it's a bit uh, long, but I will have the code samples on the web. Gosh, this is a cute puppy. Uh, <coughs> so, a couple of other stuff that are in Fiddler. Um, Fiddler can clean your IE cache. Fiddler can uh, have sc uh, screenshots. Okay, you can screenshot using Fiddler. Um, I think we'll have uh, two more minutes. Okay, um, we have an encoder utility which is kind of fun. It allows you to uh, a text wizard. It allows you to take content, for example, a view state, a base64 um, string of a view state, and convert it to text. Okay, you can use um, uh, this tool to take URLs that are encoded and decode them into the original URL, okay? Instead of having hexadecimal characters uh, which you don't understand, okay? This is a great tool. And we also have the session comparison. For example, if we make a change to a website, we can ju just take a, a SAZ file from before and new SAZ file and just compare the two list of sessions, figuring out what has changed between the versions, okay? And there's also a nice tool. This is not part of Fiddler. This is an additional uh, application to Fiddler called Fiddler Cap. This application, I just want to show it to you because it's so cool. This application is actually not intended for developers. It is intended for customers. All I need to do is, if I have a customer that has a problem, I can send him this application, tell him, please start the capture. Please uh, browse to your website. When you're done, okay, browse to the website. <coughs> when you're done, Go back to the Fiddler cap, press stop, and then save and send me the bloody file. Okay? That's it. My customers don't need to understand how to work with Fiddler, how to export sessions from it. Just start, stop, save, and if they want to have a screenshot, 
during that time, they can also have a screenshot. Okay. <coughs> Once they save that file, SAZ file sent it to me by mail. It's already compressed. I can open that file in Fiddler and figure out what the heck they did with that website. Okay. So you can download this uh, application from the Fiddler website. It's that simple, and it just works unless it crashes. So please remember, Fiddler is not only about monitoring. It's about changing the content of requests. It's debugger. It's a debugger for web developers. Okay? It allows you to extend how Fiddler works, and it's so easy to use. So please, if you haven't installed Fiddler uh, on your machines, please do it when you go back to your office on Monday. And you have to take my word for, uh, for it, but you will use it by the end of the year. Okay, so uh, we'll answer questions in a second. I just want to show you some resources. Uh, the Fiddler website is listed upstairs uh, on the top. On the bottom, you have the link to the presentation. Um, there is a blog uh, by the creator of Fiddler, uh, Eric Lawrence, and he also answers in the forum. So if you have any questions about Fiddler, just place a question in the forum. Usually, he picks it up uh, with the time difference. You know, it's from the US, so there is a time difference. And you have my content on the bottom. And of course, don't forget to tell us how it was. Hint, hint, green, green. OK. And <coughs> I think we have time for questions, unless you want to go to see the uh, Meet Azure uh, conference, which is supposed to be in about 20 minutes. Oh, we have 20 minutes for questions. <laughs> no, we actually, um, we actually concluded the session. But since there is no other session here, we won't get kicked out. So. The table is open for questions. Questions, anyone? Did you enjoy the session? Yeah. OK, so thank you very much um, for being here. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope you will install Fiddler early Monday morning. And thank you for coming to NDC Oslo. Have a nice day. And enjoy uh, tonight's uh, um, celebrations. It's going to be cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> <coughs>